I'm with uh, Jerry Johnson, who, with uh, Don Simmons, has written Why They Die, Curing the Death Wish in Our Kids. Um, you have a similar heart for this issue because not only do you love kids, you've spent years in youth ministry, but you identify in that you yourself were at that stage of wanting to take your life. I was, and I've seen the other side, the what we would call felled suicides. I've stood at the bedside of an 18-year-old comatose the rest of his life, a 19-year-old young man who took a shotgun and removed all of his face, and three teeth left. You know, young people romanticize with suicide, and what is so dynamic about this book is we are taking the romanticism out. We're giving the facts. It's the kind of book that a pastor could use, a, a faculty member, but in particular, a parent, because every suicidologist in this country will say, we've got to get rid of the myths, and we've got to bring the facts to what's going okay, on. Okay, now you talk about the myths, and in the book, uh, you have a whole chapter called Common Myths About Suicide, and there's a lot here. I don't know if we can cover them all, but let's, let's get to them, because I, I found it fascinating when I was reading your book. People who talk about suicide don't commit suicide. Is, that's myth number one. It is. And, you know, we often think that if somebody says that, that they, they, they don't have a propensity. But the predisposition exists. Most often, there are risk behaviors and warning signs. And when anybody verbalizes an intent about the desire to die, it should never be taken lightly. <clears throat> now, you, you, say, you, you also suggest in that first myth, uh, ways of uh, listening uh, and, and, and responding to the warning signs of suicidal intention. But one of the things you make the, the point of, and I, I remember it sticking out to me when I was reading the book, ask the key question. Uh, and and uh, as I saw that, I thought, the key question, I wonder what that is. Um, do you have a plan or method to take your life? Have you considered an actual time to do it? This is such a huge question, Jim. And uh, so many times parents have said to me after the death of their son yeah. or daughter, we see it all perfectly now. We didn't then. <clears throat> if you think your son or daughter is suicidal, the key question is, do you have a plan or method? And if a child has associated a timeline with it in any way, because when someone's rationally thought out a plan or a method, a timeline, they're in immediate danger. They should never be left alone. And they need the expertise of someone who can help them. That could be a mental health professional. It could be a well-trained pastor. It could be, uh, you know, one of the therapists. There's so many people. In the back of our book, we give that 1-800-273-TALK. We give all the resources of both Canada and the United States that are comprehensive. And in future days, as we hear Dr. Crosby from the Center of Disease Control, Dr. Gucher from Dalhousie University, we'll leave no stone unturned of the really the multiple helps. And then, of course, we come along with Crossroads with this dynamic prayer line that is rescued nearly 14,000 yeah. people. Just uh, unbelievable. Astonishing, really. Here's myth number two, as you've outlined it. Suicides usually happen without warning. Well, th this is the common myth in that parents, we sat down with it, and in the next several days, we'll meet parents whose son or daughter took their life, died by suicide. At first, they thought there were no signs, but in retrospect, they said, Jerry, I can't believe what I missed here and here and here. So there is exhibiting warning signs. There is what we call suicidal ideation. And when you learn these basic facts, you can rescue. Yeah. Myth, myth number three, suicidal people can't be, talked, can't be talked out of it if they're really intent on dying. It's absolutely false. In fact, whenever I hear a principal say, oh, we had a suicide in our school, so we shouldn't talk about it. I know he's completely ignorant about the topic. No psychiatrist, mental health therapist would ever make such a, a baseless statement. They can be talked out of it, and we have to talk to them. We can't act like, oh, well, let's just all be quiet and everything will go away. The opposite will take place. It'll gestate, and then suicidologists talk about a trigger mechanism, final disappointment, something, you know, that pushes someone over the edge. But it is a gestation process that brings us to the trigger mechanism. Uh, how about this one? An individual's improvement following a suicidal crisis means the suicide risk is over. It, it, there, that is a big myth because we think, well, we got Tony over it in the 10th grade, so, you know, again, it could never reoccur. You might find this interesting, too, and we asked Crosby and Kucher about this, about the multi-generational suicides. You know, suicide that kind of stitches itself as a silver lining through multi-generations of a family. 
And it, and it, it is not genetic, but we do know that just as coronary disease has a genetic reality to it, that there is, we, our DNA comes from the parents that God gives us. And if there is a mental illness, sometimes it threads itself through multi-generations. And, and again, all the more important that we know the warning signs. Now, let's, let's just uh, do a little shift here. I understand that uh, Justin Bieber's mom was on the show a few weeks ago. Uh, Patty... Mallet. Mallet is her name, right. And, and she talked about uh, a suicidal moment in her life, and uh, let, let's take a look at it. When I was 17, you know, a combination of all the pain from my childhood um, and unhealthy relationships on top of adding drugs and alcohol mm -hmm. to the mix, coming to a head, and, um, you know, I was just so desperate, and I tried to take my life. Mm. And um, I ended up in the hospital for trying to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And during that time, I had um, a man come and talk to me about God all the time. And he brought me a rose the first time he came. I shared this on yeah. Huntley Street. Um, he came in and brought me a rose, and he said, um, God told me to bring you this rose and tell you that this is how he sees you. One day, he said, when you hit rock bottom, there's nowhere to go but up. Mm -hmm. What do you have to lose by giving God a chance to see what he has planned for your life? You don't want it. Mm -hmm. You're not doing so great with it. What do you have to lose? If God is real and he created you with a purpose and a plan, what do you have to lose? Mm -hmm. And so I had no answer. I had no better answer, no better options. So I thought, well, I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to give it a try. And so that's when I cried out and said, God, help me. And I had an encounter in the hospital, and that was sort of my turning point yeah. for me. I think what is great about John and his wife, was Sue, mm -hmm. was that they stuck by you they did. through the whole thing. I mean, yeah. one day, you know, he said that you're going to church and picked you up they without did. any warning. Yeah. And I mean, I think a lot of people would love to know that they have, you know, you call them your spiritual parents. Yeah through that? Yeah. I have been really blessed with them in particular, having yeah. them as they're just amazing spiritual parents. And and I have like a, f a bunch of, I feel like, spiritual moms and dads surrounding me that, um, you know, I didn't, I wasn't so close with my mom on, on that end of mm -hmm. being able to talk through things. So I feel like God put other people in my life that I could sort of bounce things off of. And, and, um, John and Sue just, they're still in my life today, and I wow. still talk to them regularly. Really? And they're still, you know, praying for me and cheering me on, and, um, and yeah, I'm really so lucky to have them. So there's Patty Millette. I was rebuked for my pronunciation of her name. Uh, Justin Bieber's mom talking about really an intervention that came through a, a concerned pastor and his wife and, and, and the church. Uh, there's much more we could talk about in terms of myths, but... The fact of the matter is that uh, response from loving people can make a huge difference. And that's one of the reasons why I believe in what Crossroads is doing here. Because Crossroads is providing a whole army of loving people who are listening <clears throat> and praying and uh, really making a, a, a difference. Well, my prayer is that there'll be parents listening to us that will get a large quantity of these books and literally give them to the schools. Yeah. Pastors really need to alarm their congregation. Th this is an issue. We're talking about morbidity. We're talking about it in catastrophic levels. And it's caught the attention of everybody in North America. Who more poised to address this than Crossroads? Because we have the life-changing message yeah. of Jesus Christ. Yeah. I was a would-be suicide. I'm not. And God has used that. We can pass the gift on of eternal life. Uh, why don't we just take a moment, Jerry, and uh, I think it would be very appropriate for you just to lead us in, in a word of prayer for someone who right now, I agree. Uh, watching this program, has been seriously considering, maybe for the last 24, 48 hours, uh, ending it all. And for whatever reason, you flipped onto this show, and here's this guy talking about suicide, he's written about it, the whole show is about it, and you're seeing some hope here. Uh, Jerry, lead that person in a prayer. 
Will you pray with me right now? And I just want to remind you there is hope. And that's why that telephone number is on the screen. You can call even after this prayer, day or night, 24 seven, we're here for you. And we'll listen lovingly and patiently make the telephone call. Now let's lift your need to God, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you'll give hope to people who feel hopeless. Mm -hmm. We pray for those that are in darkness, that you'll illuminate your light. And we ask Heavenly Father that you'll give courage to parents who are facing the challenge of a son or a daughter that it seems just insurmountable, incommunicable. Lord, would you arm them with the strength that only comes from your spirit. We ask in Jesus' name that you would expel depression and that you would allow your spirit to work and give new life. And we thank you that the power of Jesus can break darkness in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Amen, Jerry. You know, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, Jesus is the life, friends. And boy, if there's anything that is an answer to the world's challenges right now, it's the life that Christ amen. brings. Thanks, Jerry. We'll be talking more, uh, God willing, tomorrow.